Yet. Hello fellow kids, welcome back. For today's project, I want to do kind of a scrap buster project of sorts that I can use up some of the things that I have laying around and make something usable. Last year, I made this quilt out of pillowcases and it turned out really, really good. I found this pattern as the inspiration. So I wanna make something similar to that, but smaller. The first thing I need to do is to measure what I have left over as far as quilt batting goes. When I did the D&D &D wall hanging, I used part of this and I'll need to kind of square it up and decide how big I can actually make this. And once I have that done, then I'll need to decide how big I want my triangles to be. Then I need to pick all of my fabrics that I'm gonna use. Hopefully it doesn't end up looking like garbage. That's really the only thing I'm hoping for here. So let's see how this goes. Step one, measure. The batting I think is going to end up being 45 inches long by about 32 inches wide. So this is gonna end up being kind of a lap quilt. It's a little smaller than I personally like to use because I want to wrap up everything, but it'll be nice to have for your feet or your legs, something like that. To make the triangles more proportionate to the size, I think what I'm going to do is have them be about four inches across at the bottom and then five inches tall. So with those measurements laid out, we're going to end up having nine rows for the length with eight triangles across. So in total, I'm gonna have to cut about 72 individual triangles. Now that might sound a little daunting, but really it'll be pretty easy. So now that I have my measurements worked out, what I'm gonna do is make a template for the triangle, pick the fabrics that I want to use, go ahead and start cutting those out and get them sewn together. It shouldn't be too bad. It should not be too hard. So next stop, triangle pattern, picking out my fabrics. Now that I have my triangle drawn, the one thing you need to remember is to add little flat spots and that's gonna be your seam allowance. Because if I try to sew this as it is, then I'm gonna lose probably a quarter of an inch of my triangle and it's not gonna look right. So I wanna do a seam allowance and I'm rough estimating this. I'm just kinda eyeballing it. So where the orange is, is where I'm gonna cut this out. Now it gives me my seam allowance all the way around so that when I sew this together, I get my four by five inch triangle every time. So looking at my fabrics, there's not really a rhyme or reason to any of it. So I know I definitely want to use this and I definitely want to use this. You know what? This may not make any sense. The whole thing may not be super cohesive and that's fine, whatever. So how about we just cut some shit out and see what happens? Why not? You should probably ask me, hey Katie, what about ironing? To which I say, no. I wanted to add one little side note here. Quilting is all about precision and I am not. So this is going to be approximately right. That's all. Now I have all of my pieces cut out. I'm not real sure what this is gonna look like, but we'll put it together and see what happens. Time to sew.
When I started this, I wasn't exactly sure what pattern I wanted to follow because none of my colors seemed to super go together. What I decided to do is to do alternating color blocks with white. What I ended up with was white, blue, white, blue. What you'll find in the inspiration photo, but also when you start doing this, is you need a straight edge for the ends of your rows. One of your eight triangles, you have to cut it in half. And that's what I did here, was rather than cut the blues in half, because I kind of wanted the color block to be the feature, I cut the whites in half. So that's it for my mini quilt scrap buster project. Overall, I think this turned out really well. I think that I definitely used up scraps, which was priority number one. And overall, it was pretty easy to put together. I am not a quilter. I am not someone that focuses on precision, but hopefully what this shows is that anyone can make a quilt because if I can do it, definitely anybody else can do it. None of the little points line up perfectly, which is fine because it's still pretty cozy. Hopefully this inspires you to pull out some of the scraps that you have in your own stash and come up with your own pattern so that you can create a cool little quilt for yourself. It's too small to be really all that useful for me, but if and when a friend or someone close has a baby or is expecting, then I will probably offer this as a gift because who cares if they mess up a blanket made out of thrifted scraps? Nobody. If you're interested in the batting that I used for this, I have a link for it below. 
It's 100% cotton and it is very affordable. So I highly recommend the batting that goes with this over the polyester stuff. As I've said a million times, we're trying to get away from polyester. Otherwise, thank you for tuning in. Next week, I am working on a full tour of my fabric stash. So tune in then, it'll be a long one. Until next time, bye. <coughs> I inhale, but I don't spit. <coughs> I am Grace. Oof.